Iranian regime tries to link massacre at religious shrine to the protesters. According to Iran's state-run media on October 26th, an attacker opened fire on worshippers at the Shah Shiraz shrine in Shiraz. More than 40 victims were injured, while 15 were confirmed dead. According to Iran's president, Ibrahim Raisi... Wait, Armin, you didn't pull up the news. Thank there you. you go. Okay. According to Iran's president, Ibrahim Raisi, the recent riots related to Masa Amini's death empowered ISIS to carry out the attack. Many in Iran, already familiar with the regime's brutal practice, are not buying Khamenei and Raisi's claims. According to Iran International, many anti-regime critics took to social media to declare their suspicions. One of the most considerable disparities was a poster released by the Iranian regime stating condolences to the people who died, posted three minutes into the 20 minute, three minutes after the 20 minute long attack started. The alleged ISIS post claiming the attack also contains errors in the date, and the spelling follows Persian writing rules, not Arabic standards. The Iranian regime took only one hour after the attack to declare the attacker was ISIS. So, Armin, I think this is really important to dig into in a little bit more detail than we did last week. So what happened was there is a holy shrine in Shiraz and there were people who were praying. And the timing of this is what's really important. So in Iranian culture and also in like other Islamic practices, the 40th day after someone dies, you hold a memorial, like a second memorial for their death. And this attack just so happened to occur on the same day as the 40th day memorial for Masa Amini, who was the 22 year old girl who was killed by the morality police for improper hijab, if you don't know. Um, and so, and the memorial that happened for Masa was massive, absolutely massive. The regime tried to put up physical barriers so that people couldn't go. And it was in um, Saquez, I believe. But um, people like blocked off the highways and just started walking on foot in the thousands. It was incredible. And of course, security forces came in and really tried to suppress everything, started assaulting people, just, you know, their standard MO. Um, and what also happened on the 40th day after Masa's death was that the remainder of the Metropole building collapsed, which we didn't talk about this last week. And Armin, can you like give people more context about what this whole Metropole thing in Abadan is for those who don't That's, know? I, th I think we should focus on the Shah Shirak because that, that did not become a big story. Um, the Shah Shirak thing had become a major, major, like everybody was focused on this one. Okay, well, um, the... Overview is that several months ago this year, there was a giant apartment building in the city of Abadan that collapsed, basically because of corruption and poor building standards. And it killed, you know, a ton of people. And then it just so happened that the remainder of the building fell in the same yep. day, again, killing more people. And there are people who think that these are connected. Yeah, and here's the thing. We can't uh, prove any of the connection here. But it's just so, so coincidental. And even, and the government is milking it. You know what I mean? Like this attack on Shah Shirak, people are saying it was not ISIS. It was the government itself. It's just like, what the hell? On the, on the same day, so that everybody was expecting more protests against the regime to happen. On that very day, all of a sudden, there is an attack on people who are very religious, who people assume that are more sympathetic with the regime as a way to change the narrative to show that the pro-regime people are the victims that just seems way too convenient and we, even if that's not what happened so there's three scenarios okay either it was the regime itself carrying out that attack or it was actually isis um or it was isis but the government kind of gave a green light to isis to do this that's what allowed also it to some, happen allowed it to happen right but it has, as people predicted, it was used in such a way. Like, it, it seemed like they were always, first of all, 
um the announcement of it was i mean i'm not going to go into conspiracy theories right now okay because i already went through that last time okay for why this was so suspicious like that look that was like the regime itself okay there are so many different things that people are like going over like oh my god this and this and that okay but but the utility of it was exactly as if it was the government's own mm -hmm. doing right you know like mm -hmm. everybody everybody was like oh here it is attack by isis this shows that the protests have gone too far now we need to crack down on the protesters okay because you have to understand that in iran the government can't just do anything it was it, it wants it has to sell it to its supporters it, there has to be a narrative like people think like a tyranny works in a way that the tyrants just can do would do whatever they want without having a justification for it you do have a base that you have to give a justification to, to for your actions right and this attack was that justification that even if some of the pro like some, we have good protesters and bad protesters and the bad protesters mm -hmm. are taking advantage of the good protesters and the good protesters have some good points and we should listen to them but the bad protesters are basically misusing like the the, the government narrative is this that uh, the good good protesters are the people who have concerns regarding economic issues and in this country we allow people to protest however there are these uh, uh degen there are a whole bunch of degenerates who are the minority who are using the genuine concern that the iranian people have as a way to come ask for certain other things which is degeneracy and these are um that's why they they're against the hijab because they're pro degeneracy they're like they are sex addicts and a whole bunch of young people yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that are haven't married yet and this is why we should uh, reduce the age of marriage and stuff like that because you get horny oh, and you come to the streets and protest right and they're like these these degenerates have been used by zionists and imperialists and they are like um that's why but but the still the narrative is like we do allow protests in this country right but with this attack on Shah Chirag, uh, they were like, okay, now we should cut, shut down all the protests, okay? Because obviously our enemies, Saudi Arabia, ISIS, and the people against uh, our holy revolution and all um, are using this as a, even if you have genuine concerns, that they're, it's being misused and the country is now a threat. And that's not, now we have to wipe it all. Everybody should go home, okay? So um and this is the and again this is right within the regime's playbook before like we have many, many other examples of how the regime actually caused the tragedy to change the narrative um and they've come out since, and said it yeah yeah it has been like the, in the like even though this hasn't been proven the other ones have basically right like for example from the very beginning they burned us with the theater um beginning of the revolution to kill a whole bunch of people just to start the revolution right uh there was an attack on another shrine in mashhad uh 20 years ago for the same reason right and some people suggest that the attack on the ukrainian flight uh it, which killed a whole bunch of iranians uh that was also along the same lines like every time the regime is like is having a crisis moment they just shoot their own people or like bomb their own people and they say like oh the enemy is like we they want to cause you need like some their own supporters because their own supporters are not reliable enough you need to like poke them to come and support the regime right you need the regime to be attacked in a certain way to raise the passion of the people who are pro-regime to come out because they're like where are where why are the people on our side not being aggressive enough in their support so you want to basically poke mm. this is the reason why you might want to attack the Sunni region of Iran uh, just to cause a, a tension between Sunnis and Shia so that you could say, oh, external enemy, you're not behind the regime. This is why you want to attack the court part of Iran to start a war between the Kurdish part of Iran and the rest of Iran to, ca to cause an external enemy, to cause tension as a way to people to unite against the regime. This is why as soon, there are reports now that Iran might want to start a war with Saudi Arabia. Like you know, So nuts. Uh, just, it's like suicidal. Just so, yeah, just so that you have tensions enough so that you could justify more and this is also the reason why the iran iraq war saved mm -hmm. the regime even the regime people admit that without the iran iraq war the regime would not have not, not have survived the external enemy that was saddam was the reason why this re regime was managed to survive a lot of people are like oh how did it survive the iran iraq war no it was because of the iran iraq war that it survived it right anyways um I do have a lot of interesting videos that we could watch from Iran, updates from Iran. Are there any uh, comments that we want to highlight from our members? Oh, um, oh yeah, Qasem 
we have a picture of now a street cat being killed by the by the um, regime. <laughs> a lot of people are sharing the picture of the cat that was killed by the uh, officials. Susanna is frozen, I think. Susanna, are you with us? No. All right, so I'm just going to highlight some comments and uh, some videos from Iran until Susanna's connection is back. Uh, yeah, Susanna, I'm going to put Susanna down. Um, yeah, I got some. I see that, like, oh, as a sign of degeneracy, uh, one imam was telling people, like, oh, these people are, are drinking alcohol. Uh, just that's why they're so brave. It's the alcohol that is making them so brave because a lot of people are impressed with how brave these protesters are. And apparently, you know, alcohol being non Islamic is the way that this imam is justifying why the, all of this is happening, right? Um, <laughs> Yes, that's actually that is actually the official narrative of the regime. Horny teens are destroying our country. That's a, the genuine. This is what the official standing of the we government. We actually talked about that a few weeks ago. There yeah. was a, a Raifi reporter saying that <laughs> what? in the generation of war, we used to fire RPGs to discharge our sexual repression. These. Yeah. Teenagers. No, but, but no, this but is Susan, all they have. <laughs> yeah, but last week, that that week, who was just Rafi poor. Now it's becoming the official position. The the, the, the government is coming. Yeah, the government is out now. It's not just Rafi poor. More and more people are saying these people are just horny. That's why they they're against their job because they're horny. That's why they're protesting. They want degeneracy. Oh my God. Because Rafi like, poor there's, is a fucking joke. Like. And they, 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 their solution, no, it's not just Raifi Poor. Their government officials are saying the answer to all these protests is Islam. Because this is, we're, they're saying society is modernizing so fast because Islam tells you to marry earlier. This is what they say, this is why we should marry earlier because these are people are horny. If they were married, this protest wouldn't have happened. This is their position. They're like, see, this is why we need more Islam. This is why we need more Islamic laws. This is why we need to get our young marry earlier. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so I think we should also talk about a lot of other stuff that's happened this week because there's been some big updates that have happened. Um, first of all, wait, let me pull up the exact number. Give me one second. Okay, so this is really important. Um, according to the Norwegian-based NGO Iran Human Rights, at least 304 people including 41 children have been killed since the beginning of this uprising. So 300 civilians. And, oh, well, yeah, let's talk about what happened here and then I can get into Zahdan. Um, no, no, I'm Armin, explain what's you, going on. I'm, no, 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 I'm just going to show you some pictures. I don't need to explain. I'm just going to show you uh, the numbers of people are showing up. Is like getting, I'm going to show you some recent videos that I didn't show last week. These are more recent ones, just to, yeah. for you guys to see what the atmosphere. Is. By the way, I no, have the so many videos. This video is a, the context of this video is important because it's a 40th day ceremony yeah. for yeah. I mean, someone who was killed in Isfahan, I believe. Yeah, but there's so many 40th day anniversaries now. This is why the regime is like, like, do we shoot or don't we shoot? Because every person they shoot, they start um, a first day uprising because of it, a seventh day uprising, and a 40th day uprising, right? So that's why some, one of the protests of people is like, for each one of us you kill, a thousand of us will rise. So the regime is kind of stuck between a, hard, uh, between a rock and a hard place. And they're like, if we don't shoot at people, um, well, they will come, come out in the streets because we're not shooting at people. But if we do shoot at people, then we kill one of them, then their 40th day anniversary is, it's a calling out for people to come out. And now every, they have shot so many people. Like every day we have new deaths. Every day we have new deaths now, right? That's how they, where they we are shoot right. and kill people at the 40th day ceremonies. And the cycle yeah, just the, begins again. And the people are saying like, great, you gave us another 40th day anniversary for us to come out because the 40th day anniversary of each death is becoming the day that people come out in protest, right? But now every day is becoming a 40th day anniversary of someone. So the regime is just providing more excuses for people to come out in the streets. Like I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I lost track of the names now. Like we used to have like four. Like remember, like just like halfway through this revolution, uh, we, there were mass protests over four people, four killings. Now, now it's just like 
so many it's just like crazy like every day we we, we have a twitter like yeah so and so died this person died that person died and people are like uh, and and the way they treat the family the way they treat the family is horrific they like kidnap they kidnap the body of the children and they like we won't give you the body unless you tell the media that the, the, your kid didn't die in the protest and it's unbelievable how many parents come out and say like no we are not going to lie. And they threatened them with death. And some yeah. of them have died over, like, okay, let me actually show you this uh, picture. You keep talking while oh, I find Oh, Grey picture. Jedi is also bringing up a very important point that I neglected to mention. He's saying that 300 number is only the known deaths. In reality, it's a lot more. Yes, that's a very good point because he, um, you're on human rights does a lot of work to do confirmations by looking at certificates. So this number is an absolute minimum. Again, it's an absolute minimum of who we know. Um, oh my God, this photo broke my heart. Can you like explain the context of this for people? Yes, yeah, in Tasvir, Peder Mother Hossein Ronagi. So this is a picture of the father and mother of Hossein Ronagi. Ke in shab hara ba in vaz jolis and dan va bin be sob mirasan an ta az vaziyat on khabar bigar. That these days they this is how they spend their night every night in front of Evin Prison. This is Evin Prison because they're like just waiting for something coming out of the prison about their child, and they say nothing. Like they get so very little information. But they're well, spending okay. all their night, all their days and night, they're sleeping in the front of the prison just so that they could get some some news about their kid inside, which is one of the protesters. Well, but it, also recently, also one of the... Go ahead. Yeah, go on. No, you go on. Well, what makes it even more significant is Hussein Ronagi is a very extremely important activist, particularly in the form of an activist for free expression in Iran. And he was essentially kidnapped when he was on his way to go present himself to a prosecutor. And the regime has broken his limbs and refused to medical treatment. And since then, his parents haven't heard any news about his well-being or his health since. And so his life is in extreme danger. It's extremely precarious. And Shortly after that photo was taken, Armin, his father had a heart attack. Yeah, and died. What? Yeah, didn't he die from? Didn't he die from a heart attack? Okay, I don't know. I know some I don't, parents died from a heart. heart. I don't know. All, all I know is that a okay, heart attack. Maybe I don't have. I know. Heart. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if he died or not. But like so one of the parents was it these same parents? I didn't know that. Was it this parent that got a heart attack from their? Okay. His okay. father. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that it was the same parents. You know a lot. It more happened about like this. within the past twenty-four hours. Okay, you're a lot more updated than I am over this. That's very impressive. Um, but let me show you. So let me show you this. Um, oh yeah. But it, there's a lot I can't show you because a lot of it is brutal. No kidding. Uh, but this is. This is the atmosphere in front of a lot of universities these days. I'm just showing you one example. Like this, this is, is a this graveyard. Is co- yeah, but in front of oh yeah yeah, this is a graveyard. But also a lot of university students like are coming out like constantly, day after day, burning a job, protesting. But yeah, hold on. let me show you. But the univers- universities are right now the main. Po- oh look at this one. This is a Qasem Soleimani statue being burned. Hell this yeah. Hold on. Of course. So, yeah, there's just like, oh, let me show. I think I can show you this one because there's a lot of images that are coming out of Sistan, Baluchistan, which is this is one of them that I can't show because there's a lot of blood and a lot of shooting. But just so that you could get an understanding of the kind of the war zone that we're dealing with in Sistan, Baluchistan, which is like a Sunni part of Iran. Jesus Christ. Well, and to provide more context, what's happening in Zahedan is, so on September 30th, after Friday prayers, people had left Friday prayers to go protest in front of the police station because the one, a high ranking police officer was accused of R wording. I can't use the word because YouTube R wording a 15 year old girl. And 
at this protest, essentially, it was just a, an insane massacre. At least 90 people died, at least, as a result of the crackdown from the regime. There are even reports of security forces shooting people from helicopters. So, and many people think that it was pre-planned. I mean, I'm talking like shooting 16-year-olds from rooftops with snipers, like this level. And so what's happened since then is that basically every Friday, at the end of Friday prayers, it becomes another demonstration and another protest against what has now been dubbed Bloody Friday. And each week, it's the same. Just this last Friday, there was another Bloody Friday. Two days ago, another Bloody Friday of 16 people, at least 16 people, just getting massacred in the streets. It's absolutely crazy. Like, it's... And so, the death toll in Sistan and Baluchistan alone is, like, one-third of the entire civilian death toll since the beginning of this uprising. And so, it's, like, the, the Baluchis are already extremely disproportionately affected by state violence in the form of executions. They're vastly overrepresented in state executions because they're impoverished. And then with the state violence we've seen through the uprising, like the toll on the Baluchis alone is on a different level. Let me show you some videos of a new sports that has been invented in Europe. Yes, I sent this to you today. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show a whole bunch of them. Right. So a lot of. By the way, there's two sports. Um, one of them I can show you. This one I can show you. So the two sports are like people are killing and burning government officials. Okay, like government armed armed forces. Um, I showed uh, Susanna some of them. So government forces are not safe anymore. Like I I sh I sent Susanna one. One of them was on fire. Like literally on fire, running in the street on fire, which I can't show you. There was a whole bunch I mean, that mm. there is in. I mean, the stuff that happened in Karaj is crazy. Like, yeah, mullahs getting ripped out of cars, beaten in the streets. Like security forces severely Arm injured, at least yeah. one killed. Like, yeah, you saw the one that the the armed forces were in the car and people were like. They were all bloody. The, the soldiers were bloody and they were throwing stones at them. And one of the soldiers were like, don't hit me. And then he said, like, he said, he said something I can't say here, but like, basically shut your mouth. Like, this is what you deserve. Like, something like that. Oh, right? my Jesus. And it was like, there was full, the car was full of blood. And you could not believe what, when this video was shared on Twitter, the Iranians who were like, loving this. They were like, this is it. This is our revenge. Like, they were... There was there was a girl that just basically was kicking one of the injured soldiers, and people were like, "This is our this girl is our hero, right?" But so that I can't show you. Um, but what I can show you is another sport, uh, which is hitting off the turban of mullahs, right? So let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, it's the people... uh, international amama throwing <laughs> competition. It's a new Iranian sport. So let me actually show you a list, a whole bunch of them. So the, I don't know if you have the background noise. A little so bit, people, yeah. People are taking these videos of people like removing uh, the mullahs turbans off in Iran, and they're putting sports commentary on it as if it's a, as if you're watching like a football or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like they even like, i love how they made an, an, um, um the animation of the hat throw yeah <laughs> like they put they, no, they put animation as if it's like a uh you go like from the actual footage to the slow motion. yeah it's like it's like football yeah like it's like a soccer like a... oh yeah and you should and you see the score at the bottom part bottom left as well yeah like, yeah yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, the distance, you measured the distance just so they could get the score. <laughs> oh, and the angle and everything. <laughs> Another one, a girl here. Oh. Wait, what is he saying? Like, what's the translation from the commentator? 
it's some sports lingo which I don't understand. Huh? Oh, Sarah Zang, like right at the ring, right, right at the ring of the bell. Like it's like beautiful. It's perfect. Like this, like excites everybody that is a sports fan. Like, well, she did a perfect job, perfect hit. Like, it was unique. It was a unique move. I have more. I have. Do you want to see a lot more of this? I have a lot of more of a lot more of this. Well, Wait, this, this is the, the one video. that I sent you. This is my favorite. <laughs> yeah but after this i have a lot more but i also want to show you how they're like countering this okay because it's real funny so for those who are listening if what you can't see it's like b-roll of a bunch of young seminarians holding their amamats but then mm. <laughs> there's also like a drop down menu of the different cities in iran like masha rash Tehran, Qom. <laughs> So it's, you know, tallying the different regions and then the banner says International Amama Throw 2022. <laughs> oh, he's coming up from behind. <laughs> the slow motion the calculations on the timing the fly time i love it it's so good another one <laughs> wait i have i have a lot more videos like this that is not I like how this to... person is like goal go wait 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 hold on. i'm going to show you two more videos or oh, three more videos but also how the mullahs are fighting back okay mm -hmm. wait mm. So these are a whole bunch of schoolgirls who threw them, uh, the turban off. And look how excited the girls are. These are schoolgirls. <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, the girls, the level of excitement over what they just did is just beautiful. Hold on. I have another one. Oh, mashallah. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait. Well, um, I have one more in the bus. You saw it? Too? That was a quick one. This is a girl just throwing off the mullahs. The okay, but now this is what this is where it gets interesting, okay? So let me show you. This is what the mullahs are doing. They're tying it now. Like, imagine how common it's becoming that this is what they're doing, right? This is what they're being forced to do. And here's another one. Look. <laughs> Multiple? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of mullahs. They're tying their mama. They're tying their turban on because oh it's just not. God. It's like it's not just like these are not. It's a common thing. If you're a mullah, you're now expecting. When you go in Iran, walking around, oh you expect God. people to do this to your turban. That's how common. What do you this think is. about that? Like, <laughs> especially in in contrast to how things were when you were growing up. Like, what do you I feel mean, like when you see that? I mean, when we see mullahs, we're like, oh my God, government, like you know, like religious person, like we have to mind our business, like we have to be careful, respect. This was like less than ten years ago. Now this is like, like. 40 years ago, this was a religious, very religious country. In 40 years, this is becoming a national, like, <laughs> sports. And, like, it's, oh, I, I should find a video. There's a video of a hijabi woman, a hijabi woman going out in the street, like a religious woman, and giving chocolate to girls without hair and telling them how beautiful their hair is. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. But like this was this was this is not Iran. Like the whole country has like it's a new country. It's a completely different country. The fa the speed at which the sentiments have changed. It's 
unbelievable. Like I don't even recognize it anymore. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I would, yeah. I want to show this one really incredible video. Um, oh. one second. Okay, let's add this. Wait, it's not adding. Add. Okay, there we go. Okay. You have audio. Yes. Okay. So for the context, this is happening in an all-girls school in Tehran, and this is this video was filmed on the anniversary of the hostage crisis that took place in Tehran. So, which is celebrated annually by the regime, if you didn't know. You know, totally normal behavior, and people still try to deny that this is not the fundamental characteristic of this regime. Anyways, okay. So, I will let the audio play, and then we can translate. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I have not seen this. This is beautiful. Isn't so that they... good? <laughs> so I don't know who is in the front, but like the school staff is telling this. Uh, kids to say deaf to America, okay? But the children are not repeating what they're supposed to repeat. They're saying deaf to dictator, like meaning the regime. So, like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. This is <laughs> so crazy. So crazy. Yeah, like how many uh, times did, were, when you were growing up, did you have to like just repeat this, you know, to yeah, like get into yeah. class, get into school, like all this bullshit. And then to see these kids, like these kids are conscious, man. <laughs> But I was I when I was these kids agents in your in the Iranian school, I could not even imagine question I could not even say like, I don't want to say death to America. Like that would like get me in trouble. So much trouble. These kids are like not like we they have no chill. They have no chill. But again, they have no chill. Well, like it's not like the government is not doing anything. Like they're getting in trouble. They're getting shot in the face. Okay. Beaten in the to death. face. I can't show you the things I can show you, but it's not like these kids are brave because nothing is happening. They're just they're so much is happening. Like I don't, Susanna. There's like a video I wanted to. Sh I, w I wish I could show. There was like one protester like underground, and there was a lineup of government armed forces that beating. They were like, remember the video that you said like I shouldn't have showed you without warning. But yeah, there, yeah. there's like so many people beating the guy. Okay. And the guy is unarmed, and they all want to have their turn. I'm like, how the guy is like dead. Like, what are you doing? You're beating the, the dead man. And they all like pass, and they keep beating him. And the next person comes, and they beat them as if like, oh no, I I need to have my share. Like it was the most vile thing I've ever seen. And then after everybody beats it, the next guy that comes like runs over him with his motorcycle, runs over him with a motorcycle, and then goes. And then the next guy comes like, oh, I want to beat him too, and they beat him. And the next guy is beating him, and his friend like, go go away. Like, like pushing him away so I could shoot him. And they shoot the man with the shotgun. The man is bleeding and the guy, like, and by the way, he survived. Do you know he survived? Like, I have a That's picture crazy. of his face. Half of his face was I like. I saw blood. that. It was horrible. They're like, after a, a whole lineup of people beating him, the guy was like, move away, move away. I don't, like, I need to shoot the guy. It's on the ground. Ble it's on, it's and they the shot him at thing. point blank range. Yeah. I wish I could show you this video because it's the most vile. Like I've seen so many things, so many brutality coming out of this country. I've never seen this anything this vile. And also, a lot of Persian people, like when they can't beat people, they keep destroying cars and motorcycles and their stores. Like they, there's some genuine hate. Like these people are psychologically. I don't know who broke them like this, but like they hate the people so much they keep destroying their properties. And every single time these videos comes out, the regime keeps saying, like, oh, these are protesters wearing police gear. Like, what are you talking about? The you... regime, the regime hasn't hasn't accepted a single protester death. A single protester death. Every single one of these protesters have died. They have a story. They're like suicide. Uh, dog bite, bit this guy. This guy had a heart attack. This guy wasn't even at the protest. Fell like, off of a building. According to the government record, there hasn't been a single, a single one of the protesters that have died, okay? And according to the government narrative, none of these videos that shows police brutality, none of them is actually the police. Every single one of them is protesters acting like the police with, the, with police gear. 
And the, the newspaper, they generally ask me, like, where are these protesters getting so much police gear? Who's giving them police gear? Does like, that not you... belie an even bigger security concern if that's true? Like, it's unbelievably crazy. Like, I don't know who these people are. Who and, and like, nobody's gonna believe this. And then I go to the rooms of pro regime people, they believe it. They're so gullible. Like, they, I don't know how they. I'm, I'm lost for words. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, somebody's like, what actually? Oh my god. Um yeah. One other really important thing that happened in this past week is um how to bottom Oops. Wait. Let me add this. Um so there's this rapper, his name is Tumaj Salehi, and he is a very famous rapper in Iran, and I'm actually like a big fan of his. Like I've been listening to his music for a really long time. And Tumaj has been a very significant dissident and protest figure. And he, he had, like, Tumaj is on a different level. He's been on a different level for a long time. Like, he, he's always seen, like, with a bullet hanging around his neck while he was in Iran. Like, he made a music video in which they essentially go, like, firebomb a bank. Like, it's wild. And so he's also very bold in his lyricism which is directed towards the injustice that people face and the ways in which iran is being exploited by the regime like he has his most famous song is basically about how regime insiders are gonna go have to go find rat holes because their time is up they're gonna have to go find go hide in rat holes tumaj also has been like just straight up posting videos of himself in the streets engaging in leading protests just on his own instagram while living inside iran like it's wild and so he was recently arrested the regime tried to paint this narrative that they arrested him while he was trying to escape across the border i believe in western Azer azerbaijan try to make him like seem cowardly or something like he was just trying to leave the country it's not true his family said that he was arrested in bakhtiari province which is not close to any border area and um he is now apparently transferred to a vien prison where he is under heavy torture and now faces risk of execution and so a lot of people have been like raising the voice of tumaj recently like hashtag free tumaj these kinds of things because it's as if like during the black lives matter protests that were happening in 2020 like if the rappers who were making songs that were critical of police brutality in the establishment like Kendrick Lamar or Childish Gambino like if they were suddenly arrested and being tortured for their art for their lyricism how they express themselves and um I don't know this like really hits me personally because in the sense that like this is someone I'm a genuine fan of like I listen to his music all the time like and just knowing like what's happening to him right now it's horrible like i don't know like armin we have like personal friends who have been tortured you know in while in prison and I, so we know what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And I, the suspicion over him being severely tortured is also because they put out a fake video of him admitting to something that he didn't. So people, uh, somebody that was tortured, right? Apparently, right? So given that that was apparently based on the fact Tumar's own family are there saying that was a fake video and it wasn't him. To, to a lot of people suggest that he didn't, that he didn't give in to torture. That means that to torture, you know, so, that, by the way, we don't, we're not sure about any of this. This is what his family are saying and this is how people are taking it, right? Um, 
there was a p p video of somebody like him uh, with different tattoos and different facial structure. They put out things. a fake forced confession. Yeah, yeah. But if they had to put out a fake forced confession, that means that no matter how much they torture, like people are saying, and again, I'm not claiming anything. People are saying that means that they tortured him a lot and he didn't give in. Um, we don't know for sure what's happening, but we'll see. We just know that he is in danger. Like a serious, lot of danger. danger. And he knew what he's getting into. He knew, like he had told people, when when I get arrested, this and this and this. Um, so he knew that this is going to happen to him. Yeah. Like he expected this to happen to him. Uh, we did get a, a comment. Hold on. Let me just highlight this. I want to know what you think as well. As well. So GJ, GJ is saying, Armin, are you sure you want to call fatal assault on regime personnel a new sport? Um, oh, by the way, please just call me GJ. Thank you for the six zero super chat. Yeah, thank I you mean, for the super chat. Thank you so much, Super Chat. I mean, I don't know what exactly you mean, but but I think uh, people in Iran defending themselves against um, armed at, uh, people who are armed and are attacking them. Um, I am completely. That's a justifiable form of def defense. Okay, any violence 100%. that happens, any any violence that happens against uh, regime officials, um, is their fault. Is the regime's fault. And anybody who stays with the regime after all of this is complicit. Are... Oh my God. I swear, I want their, until the very last day, until the very last day, we need people to be hunting down these motherfuckers all across the globe. Like, like Israel style Mossad, until the last day tracking down these yahtzees bringing them before a trial because we already know based on reports that they're insiders and their families applying for visas in sweden applying for citizenship and pap passports in germany uk da, 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 da. they're trying to move their assets they're trying to leave they're trying to liquidate stuff and flee the country no 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 amnesty no one is going to forget what the fuck happened over the past 43 years. So what so what Susanna is referring to is what Israel did to um you know, I'm just going to say it, you know, uh, to Nazis after World War II um, ended, uh, Mossad agents went and found where these people were hiding after the fall of the Nazi regime, right? Um, and they brought a lot of them back to Israel to stand trial, right? And they do it uh, to this day. People in their 90s, yeah, on their deathbed, to this day, they're bringing them in front of a trial, in front of the court. Yeah, Like, no, so, we're not letting you forget. We don't forget, and we don't forget what the brutality, yeah. the cruelty that you enacted. It's unforgivable. Yeah. And this 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 is true for anybody anybody that works for the regime right now not just the people not just the armed forces like this is an evil evil regime that is extremely like extremely brutal to his to his people so any form of anybody that is right now supporting this regime to this point or is associated with them is complicit or you know party to a crime yeah exactly nazis in argentina for example um yeah, they're already. By by the way, there's already reports of a lot of regime um, people looking for Canadian passports, UK passports, um, trying to move assets out of Iran. Which I don't know how. I don't know what this means, but a lot of people are suggesting that means that they they themselves are not sure how far how if the regime is going to survive. They must know if something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Um. Okay. Did I answer the question by the way? Yeah. So yeah, I do feel like it's a it's a sports um and again, it's justifiable defense. This is an, this is war, okay? This is we are we're in the middle of war. The Iranian people have been taken hostage and they're trying to free trying to free themselves. And what I compare it to is like imagine if you had like an account of a French um taking out an SS agent. 
Okay. Um, now looking at back at that, I don't think anybody would condemn that. Every single Basiji member, every single Niri and Tazami member, every single um, IRGC member is now the same as an SS agent would have been back in World War II. So it's completely justifiable, I think. Um, in human right. cruelty, massacres against civilians, shooting people from helicopters. Yeah. Like, I can't even... Yeah, the, the rules of war apply right now. I, however, after if like if the regime falls, um, after that, I am not in favor of any of this anymore. I'm in favor of having, you know, court proceedings, due process. Um, like right now, if there are any actions that the Iranian people take right now, it's justifiable because rules of war apply right now. But if you manage to take down the regime, and if you manage to bring us, you know, the next government, then I'm not uh, in favor of like um, any form of like execution without a hearing or a due process. Just basically the same as the Nuremberg trials in World War II. Yeah. Um, all right. Mm. Yeah, Cosmic he didn't think, but they are still entitled to, for human rights. Yes, human rights uh, applies uh, that. After, if there is no war, you need to have fair trials, okay? Before you, that's what you, but human rights also acknowledges that during a war, you take out your enemy. During a war, different laws apply, even based on human, based on human rights standards that we accept in, in, in the modern world today, right? You, you, that doesn't mean that you can do anything during a war, but there are more things that are now not a violation of human rights during a war, during war. Oh, we got another I mean, super trying to try to trying to free yourself from a kidnapper. Yes, exactly. Uh, GJ is saying I'm pro self defense, uh, resistance, justice, but sport. I thought you were no. referring to the um, Amat Amat. No, no, no. I said it. there's two sports, but here's the thing. No, this is just humor for like the Iranian protesters are using a lot of humor to just to keep their spirits up. Okay, so obviously it's not a sport. But they just refer to like Honestly. they are. This is just part of the humor. There's so like guys. I wish I could see the, the amount of humor. Like among all this misery and among all this like brutality, the way the the way that the people are referring to what they're doing and their activism, the amount of jokes, the amount of like um, the swear words that they use that makes people smile even in the middle of all this darkness. That's just that's <laughs> someone <they're>, not Sabai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they're comparing these things. <laughs> <laughs> when they're comparing like that's that's just part of that like it's just a way to just not die from misery yeah. yeah okay honestly okay so you sent me a bunch of like tweets and stuff that show the photos of the security forces or mullahs like being beaten in the streets and like even given the context and everything me just being a softy i don't like to see people get assaulted right um but the captions that people put on them, like, it's dark humor. It's really dark humor. <laughs> but they basically are using, like, because the regime has an excuse, a ridiculous excuse for every way that a protester died. So people are using that kind of, like, language against the, the deaths of the security forces of, like, Oh, he had a, he, there was one, I can't remember exactly how it was, but it was like, he, he had a phobia of tomatoes and he, and he passed away. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. So, so the regime keeps telling like every time the protester dies, they were like, Oh, this guy had a heart attack. This guy is suicide, like committed suicide. This guy was like, <laughs> so now when they, when they're killing, the protesters are killing government, um, forces and stuff they're like oh poor soldier he died in the heart of a sudden heart attack in the middle of the road or like when they see another picture like oh this guy suicided himself from he fell from a building right in the middle of the, the highway um or like oh like oh this this guy got off his car and started beating himself to death right so they like, poor guy like so yeah that was pretty yeah <laughs> there's a lot of that so yeah like me i i yeah the photos are we can't even show them right they're really horrible yeah, but yeah. even me who i really have a low tolerance for any of that even when it's justifiable um i was like damn that caption did make me laugh <laughs> so bad yeah. 
By the way, uh, let me actually show you from as a few regime pictures, um, like the people, pro-regime people. Okay, uh -huh. So a lot of pro-regime people are saying, like, enough is enough. Why is the government not ma committing, uh, Oops. killing killing the protesters, right? So this lady is saying, we will wash blood with blood. Uh, like, the regime needs to go and kill the protesters. Like, it's a pie animal martial, like, enough, you know, treating the protesters with hand glove, you know, kids glove. Oh, my God. Like, enough. Why are Why is the regime not just, like, massacring these people? Right? Uh, wow. Like, okay, and hold on. Let me actually see another one. Um, this Full is mask like, off moment. Okay. Yeah, this is one of the regime soldiers who died by protesters, and they have a picture of Hossein crying on top of him. These are these are by pro regime people Hussein. taking stuff like, yeah, Hossein is like Hussein. crying over the more one of the martyrs. Yeah, they're saying these are the martyrs, and let me show. Oh my God. You know, this is another pro. Um, she, she's saying you, she's confident. She, this is. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not going to explain this joke. That's too much explanation. But let me, oh, yeah. This, <laughs> the juice? Yeah. What's no, the name I'm, for I'm, the juice? It's San, San, San Gis? Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. Yeah. Sandy I'm not going to uh, explain it. But, like, they're making graphs, like, like, they're asking the police, like, why are you being so soft on the protesters? Like, oh end God. this whole, end this, right? Like, dear police, uh, until when are you going to let our young people, our innocent young people be killed by the protesters, right? Um, this is, you are being too kind to the protesters. Uh, please, like, do your job. Like, this is our, this is our, what we want. So just wanted to show you what the other side are saying as well. Wait, one other thing that's very significant is um, the, the Iranian real has hit a historic low. Yeah. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Dick. Yeah. And it's showing no sign of slowing down. So what do you think, I mean, that could mean? Uh, that means like a lot more uh, devastation coming down the road and a lot, of, a lot more. It, this could cause a lot of more pro-regime people to join the protesters because at some point the government is not going to be able to pay um, the people who are on their side, right? Uh, this is an, a, a big discussion we have on the Persian stream. Uh, on our Persian show, how much of the pro-regime people are ideological versus in it for their benefits, right? Because mm. the, that percentage is going to be very significant because at some point the regime is not going to be able to continue support, you know, financially take care of its side. And when that happens, what percentage of these people will eventually join the other side? That depends on how ideological these people are when it comes to their support for the regime. So that's a big question wow. right now. Wow. Yeah. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.